When it comes to working with data in SharePoint, we know that data is stored in one of two places, either in a list or in a library. We need to take just a moment to review libraries versus lists. You should have a good foundation of what lists are at this point, so we just want to again point out the similarities as well as the slight differences between the two. You also need to know how to upload existing files into SharePoint, as well as create brand new files from within SharePoint or from within the Office applications. Part of working with libraries means working with different types of content. Part of that content can be media. Managing media metadata and thumbnails is something that's a little bit different that you don't usually have to do with the other types of files. So you want to make sure you understand how to work with those special types of files as well. Perhaps most importantly is to understand what are known as SharePoint's document management features. These include check-in and check-out, versioning, and content approval. Why do you need to know these things? Well, one of the key benefits to adopting SharePoint over file shares and email and some of the things that we've been doing for many years is the more robust document management features. Document management features are what differentiate libraries from lists. These features can be confusing, though, and they can also be frustrating unless they're fully understood. They're very useful. They're not hard to use. But if you aren't sure what they're doing or why they're asking you for what they're asking, it does get frustrating and confusing. Once understood, though, they can be properly implemented, and that means you get to take full advantage of all of the wonderful things that SharePoint can do. In order to do that, of course, files must be in SharePoint. That means we need to know how to get things in that already exist, files that maybe you created last week or a year ago, as well as the new content that you'll be creating from this point forward. Believe it or not, most of this is exactly the same type of work that you've done in the past. We're just going to show you now how to use it within the SharePoint environment. It shouldn't be a scary or a cumbersome process. It's just a matter of understanding. So in order to take full advantage of all that SharePoint can do, all of the things we've talked about, including the ability to find content and manage all of the things that we have in SharePoint, we simply need to know how to do these things, as well as making sure that properties and metadata are also being properly utilized. So when it comes to comparing libraries versus lists, I always like the KISS principle. Most people know what that means. Keep it simple, sweetie. The first thing to remember is that libraries are just special kinds of lists. Everything you know and have learned about lists also applies to libraries. Primarily, that libraries are made up of one or more columns and that they also contain different views. What makes a library different from a list is a library must have a file attachment. They're file-centric, whereas lists could be just data. So what exactly can be kept in a library? Well, there are different types of libraries that come with SharePoint. Yours may have these very common names, like a document library or a picture library, or they may have been renamed, even though that's really what they are. So I just want to go over a couple of the different types of libraries so you're familiar with them. The document library is probably the most common one. It can hold all of the most common types of files. That certainly means things like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but it also includes graphics images like GIFs and JPEGs, and even PDF files and text files. Now there is a specific picture library that can only hold graphics, JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, and that's great if you tend to work with a lot of images. It's a good place to keep, for example, all of your company logos. Or if you work in asset management, maybe you have a lot of pictures of all of the equipment or property that you own. One of my favorite types of libraries is the slide library. It's really kind of underused and misunderstood, I think, because it only contains individual PowerPoint slides. It does not contain entire PowerPoint presentation files or slide decks, just individual slides. Why would you want that? Well, because I'll bet within your organization, there are certain slides that you use over and over and over again. And what people usually do is they find an old presentation, open it up, and copy the slide. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but over time, slides can get out of date. And if everybody's doing this, then maybe different people are using different copies of the slides. It's hard to keep things consistent. A slide library keeps individual slides. Let's just say that it has your org chart in it. Now, if that org chart needs to change, the one person who's in charge of doing that, whoever that may be, is going to go in and change the slide in one place, in the SharePoint slide library. Everybody will instantly have access to the updated slide. They can then use that slide in any number of presentations. But here's the really cool part. If at any point that slide changes, like maybe your CEO changes, 
then the next time any presentation that used a slide from the slide library is used, PowerPoint itself will come up and say, oh, excuse me, but by the way, did you know that this slide has changed? And do you want me to update it with the latest information? The person using the PowerPoint presentation can choose yes or no. If they wanted that old information, kind of a snapshot in time, they can keep it. But if they want to use the latest, greatest information, all they have to do is click Update, and SharePoint and PowerPoint work together to update the slides. That means it's much easier to keep everybody in tune using the same consistent information and slides throughout an entire organization. And all of the slides are in one place, so you don't have to search around to 20 different locations for them. That, my friends, is the benefit of a slide library. A couple more kinds of libraries that we have. There's a form library, and that gets into the whole topic of InfoPath. InfoPath is an Office application. It's wonderful. It's a great way to do all kinds of really extravagant and elegant things with forms. We just don't cover it in this particular class. You also can have an asset library, and assets can mean many different things. In this case, we're talking about things like audio and video and other types of content that might be used on web pages. So once we understand that we have all of these different kind of specialized libraries, that a document library is going to be the most commonly used one that contains all of the kind of general types of documents, then we need to talk a little bit about what else we can do or not do with libraries. First of all, there is a set of restricted file types, types of files that cannot be uploaded to SharePoint. Now remember, all of your normal files are allowed. Documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, PDFs, text, movies, videos, audio, all of those things are allowed in both the old Office format, like DOC, and the new format, like DOCX. The restricted file types are only files that contain code. In other words, ones that could be a security threat. They include executable files, JavaScript, VBScript, anything that has any kind of script in it. That could also include any types of Excel files that might have script in them as well. Now, this kind of makes sense because we need to protect the computer system. But what you need to know is all of the restricted file types are just in a plain old text file. Your SharePoint server administrator knows where that file is. They can open it up, and all they have to do is either add or take out a particular file type in order to make it either restricted or unrestricted. Another consideration you might have to think about is file size limits. The default limitation is that you can't upload anything larger than 250 megabytes into a SharePoint library. That number can also be increased by your server administrator, and the SharePoint 2013 maximum size is 2 gigabytes per file. However, with that said, many organizations also limit each file to only 50 megabytes. I really can't tell you exactly what your limitation is, just that it's going to be something between probably 50 megabytes and 2 gigabytes, but it could be any number in between. If it's important to you, you should check with your server administrator to find out what your limitations might be. If you're concerned about it, and if you're thinking, well, what if something is bigger than 2 gigabytes, like a video file, then the answer actually is that it can't be stored in SharePoint. There is a physical size limitation to the size of files that can be stored here, and right now, that maximum size is 2 gigabytes. It may change in the future. After all, things are always evolving. But again, just check and see if that's going to be an issue for you. The last thing we want to talk about in part one of this introductory video for working with libraries is about properties. Now, this is not anything new. File properties have always been available since Office first came out. Back in the days when we had menus, you'd go to the file menu and you'd choose properties. Or in the later versions, since 2007, you've gone to the ribbon and from the backstage view or by clicking on file or the office button, you've been able to look at the properties panel. These are still available in your office documents. But here's what's important. They also now relate to what's in SharePoint. In other words, if there has been a custom column created in SharePoint, let's say you have something called a contract number and that's a column in your library, then that will be available not only in SharePoint, but also from the file properties within Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Why do we care? Well, because those properties should be entered, and they can be entered either in the Office application via the Properties panel or in the Properties form for the item in the library. And when we go through working with libraries, we'll see both of those. What's more important is that if the library column is required, even for custom columns, then the file can't be saved into SharePoint until the required property has been filled in. 
That means if you're uploading an existing file into a library, SharePoint will prompt you to fill in that information. If you're working from within an Office application, say you have a Word document open, you've just created that brand new and now you're trying to save it into a SharePoint library, then again you will be prompted when you try to save it to enter that required information. This time though, it will happen within the Office application. Those are some of the basic things you need to be aware of about libraries and using libraries in SharePoint. We're going to end our part one video here and pick up with part two that's going to focus specifically on document management features. That will include check-in and check-out, versioning, and content approval.